Starmer was in De Edinburgh today trying to find common ground with leaders of the devolved governments and English mayors. He's been hailing fresh investment and jobs, but the cloud of his recently departed Chief of Staff Sue Gray hung over the questions he faced from journalists at the summit. And these investments that are coming in day by day, they're a drumbeat into our investment summit why on Monday, which is bringing together, which to is bringing together some of the leading, you know, CEOs across uh, the world. So for everybody listening and watching this, who's concerned to know, is there going to be investment in my region? Are there going to be jobs where I live? Okay. The answer is today we're going a long way down the road of collaborating to that end. Prime Minister, will you approve Sue Gray's severance payment? Look, we've had a really important meeting today of the Council of Regions and Nations, which is hugely important for the country. Well, that was Keir Starmer. Scotland's First Minister, John Swinney, was, of course, at that summit with Keir Starmer, and he joins us now live. John Swinney, welcome to Newslight. Thanks for joining us. Did Keir Starmer have mm -hmm. the air of a Prime Minister who, who's turned a corner? He certainly was trying very hard to move on the relationship between the devolved governments and the United Kingdom government and frankly um, it, the relationship couldn't be any worse than it was under the last Conservative government. So there was a determined effort to try to uh, focus on the, the issues and the challenges that we all face. Obviously uh, we've all got our perspectives on that. I'm very, very concerned about the upcoming budget. I wanted to make sure the Prime Minister understood loud and clear from me that we need to have investment in our public services and in our public infrastructure. And that's because the, you've been accusing him of bringing back austerity. There's any meaningful substance behind the government's agenda. Yes, you've been accusing him of bringing back austerity. Do you feel any more confident after the summit that this budget won't do that? I, I don't have any greater insight uh, tonight from uh, what the Prime Minister told me today than what I had this morning. Um, I think I, I'm very concerned that what I hear about the budget is that we will have a continuation of austerity. Austerity has got to end. It's been a disastrous experiment with catastrophic economic and social implications. So the budget on the 30th of October has got to bring austerity to an end and we've got to see investment in our public services and our public infrastructure. That's what people are, are waiting for. That's what they're expecting. And as I said, you were at the, this Nation and Region Summit where the new Nations and Regions envoy, Sue Gray, well, she wasn't there. What, what did you make of that? Obviously, there's been a, a, a huge amount of turmoil within the Labour government, not just on the issues of personnel, but also on the issues of substance. The winter fuel uh, payment cut by the Labour government has caused widespread anger throughout Scotland, throughout the United Kingdom. People are enraged that one of the first actions of our Labour government was to uh, remove this benefit from, uh, from, from pensioners. And that's got very significant and damaging implications for, in Scotland, about 900,000 pensioners who never expected to have their winter fuel payment cut by a Labour government, a Labour government. And that's caused widespread anger. And I think that's what dominates people's impressions of the Prime Minister's first 100 days in office. OK, and when it comes specifically to that envoy role, I mean, do you expect to see Sue Gray in the role? I mean, is it even a real job? Do you know, do you know what it is? I don't know what the role is, but what I expect as First Minister of Scotland is that I will have a direct relationship with the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So that's the channel of communication that I will have. I, don't, uh, I, I won't be dealing through envoys. I will have a direct relationship with the Prime Minister. That's what the, the, the public in Scotland would expect the First Minister to have. So and just that's to be clear, you, have, you don't intend to go I'll through pursue. Sue Gray? Because if you don't intend that and the other... Yeah, well, my officials... Well, my, my officials will obviously work with any representatives of the United Kingdom government, but from my part, as First Minister of Scotland, I expect to have a direct relationship with the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and that's the approach that I will take. And my reading, John Swinney, forgive me if I'm wrong, is you've been relatively positive about this meeting, you know, perhaps it's a relationship reset, as you say, after the bad relations with previous administrations. Do you have reasons for optimism about Scotland's economic prospects with Labour in power in Westminster? I'm very optimistic about Scotland's economic prospects. You know, for 
The best part of the last decade, Scotland has the best, been, been the, the best performing part of the United Kingdom for foreign direct investment other than London and the South East. And we've got a huge range of investments that we're landing because of the, the interest of my government and the pursuit of my ministers to bring investment into Scotland and offshore renewables and a whole variety of other areas of economic activity. So I'm very optimistic about uh, those points. What would help me in leading a government that's determined to eradicate child poverty is if the UK Labour government would take measures that would help me in that endeavour. For example, by lifting the two-child benefit cap. That would significantly lift children out of poverty in Scotland and it's an action in the hands of the UK government that would help me. So the point I'm making is that it would help me if the UK government took a policy direction that was complementary to the policy direction that I'm taking in Scotland to eradicate child poverty, built to boost the economy, to make the journey to net zero and to invest in our public services. And the key step in that respect is to end austerity. And John Swinney, I have to ask, part of you surely must be loving this Labour instability of the last 100 days. I mean, from a party political perspective, Labour losses presumably are SNP gains in Scotland. Well, I'm focused entirely on serving the people of Scotland. That's what I said I would do when I was First Minister. I'm absolutely focused on making sure that we deliver the improvements that I've set out, that we do all we can to eradicate child poverty, that we strengthen our public services, make our health service serve the public as effective as we can. That's what I'm focused on. It would help me if the Labour government got its act together and was actually acting in a complementary fashion to the measures that we're taking in Scotland. John Swinney, First Minister of Scotland, thank you very much for coming on Newsnight tonight.